Good morning, uh, this is James and I'm going to be joined by Louise today, my betrothed, my fiancé, and um, a recent fiancé, and we're going to be watching all of these the Harry Potter films from the beginning to the end. So, Philosopher's Stone, Chamber of Secrets, Prisoner of Azkaban, Goblet of Fire, The Order of the Phoenix, Half-Blood Prince, and The Deathly Hallows, un, deux. Okay, one and two. Uh, we've got a bit of an itinerary, so we're going to start in um, about at about seven o'clock this morning. So it's about ten to seven now. It's Saturday morning. It's the twentieth of April, two thousand and thirteen, and we'll go into early hours of tomorrow morning. So that sounds a bit scary at the moment, but um, I think it'll be okay. I think we're going to be okay, and we like Harry Potter anyway because. If we didn't, we wouldn't be doing something crazy like this. I've done it before with the Batman films, quite recently, but the craziest one I ever did was uh, with my uni mates when we watched all of the James Bond films. We watched 21 films back to back, which is mental. I don't think I'll ever be doing that again. But um, yeah, we've got all of the Harry Potters. They're all on Blu-ray as well in these lovely, big, thick boxes which we've just got as a new set, so um, it's very exciting. Um, so it's going to look really good and really nice. So in the words of the guy, Roger Lloyd Pack, who is Owen in The Vicar of Dibley, and also Barty Crouch in The Goblet of Fire, let's do it! Okay, it's uh, 9.30, <laughs> looking at the clock, and um, I've just already realised that I haven't really left enough time in between the films to do a little chat and stuff. Um, so we just got to the end of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Problem is that um, I've kind of started yawning already, so it's not a great sign, as we've got the rest of the day to watch another seven films. Uh, but I like that one. I like how Chris Columbus, who was the first director, has directed a couple of my favourite films, Home Alone, Mrs Doubtfire, real family-friendly films, and um, he was a great person to sort of start it all off, I think. And um, they stick really closely to the book. Obviously there's little bits that they cut out and stuff, because I'm kind of looking over the books again at the moment, but um, there's some things they do really well. I think Richard Harris is great as Dumbledore, and... Um, I think the kids do really well for the first film, considering they're only sort of 11 years old. I think it's, um, I think they do really well, particularly Rupert Grint as Ron. I just think he get, he gets that character from the beginning. I think he's great. Um, and the little shot that you can see on the screen is uh, from right at the end of the film, and it was the first scene that they shot actually for um, for the whole of the Harry Potter series back in um, September, I think, 2000. So. A long time ago and you can see they look really young and I um, don't know if you can see Ron's expression there but he kind of looks like come on then let's get back on the train let's go home let's go home Harry um, so yeah I think it's good I, I don't know what my favorite bit is in Philosopher's Stone I like uh, the mirror I like the mirror of Erised where Harry and Dumbledore are there because I think they do that really well they they capture the book really well I think with that so we're going to move on to the Chamber of Secrets in a minute. So generally, what do we think? What do we say out of ten for Harry Potter, the first one? Seven. Seven out of ten. Oh, okay. I was, well, you're very stingy with your marks. <laughs> I, I, um, I say a bit higher for that. I give it sort of, uh, maybe I think probably nine out of ten for the first one because I think I, I like this one. I prefer it to the next one, but I'm looking forward to watching Chamber of Secrets again because I haven't seen it for a while. So. Um, see what I think and we'll come back to you again about 12 o'clock I think. Bye for now. 
Okay, it's um, five past twelve, and we're on the last couple of minutes of the second Harry Potter film, The Chamber of Secrets. This one I've always thought was um, the one that I never really enjoyed much. I kind of I dip in and out of it a lot. I used to like it a lot, but it's based on one of the less interesting books, I think. But um, I think they do a good job of following on from the first film. But the first two are very sort of they pander to like a child audience and they're very family friendly it's all sugary and sweet even though you've got like the basilisk and the spiders and everything in this one it makes it there's a bit more threat it's a bit scarier but um it's going to get worse from here it's going to get more scary for harry and his chums um lots of good things in this one dobby is very well realized um great voice for dobby as well uh toby jones who was recently hitchcock on the BBC. Um, Kenneth Branagh's good. I've never liked the character very much of Lockhart, but um, he's, um, I mean, he's another great actor for the series. Um, Miriam Margulies as well, very good um, as uh, Professor Sprout, the first time you see her in the films. Um, and yeah, the last time until the last film, I think now. You see her really briefly in the final part of the Deathly Hallows, but apart from that, we don't see her again. That's the problem because the books are getting going to get longer now, so that means that they have to take more liberties with the films, which is fine. But I mean, otherwise you'd have like sort of ten-hour Harry Potter films each, and I think even the die-hard fans would struggle to sit through ten hours of Harry Potter you know, for one film. Um, so yeah, there are some cheesy moments. We've been talking about some of the things in this one where there's lots of repetition, characters basically repeating what's been said a lot. So that's what I mean about kind of pandering to children and to that kind of audience. Um, so this is the second one, Chamber of Secrets. What do we give Chamber of Secrets out of ten? Six. Six out of ten from Louise. And... Um, I'll be slightly more generous, I'll give this one a 7 out of 10. So I gave the first one 9, this one 7. I don't like this one as much. But we're coming on to the one that's widely regarded as one of the best, actually, if not the best in the series. So the next one it will be Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. We've had a nice little laugh about this one a second ago. Um, we tried to freeze frame at the end of each film to show sort of to show Harry basically, just to show his progression throughout the series and this is the last second of the third film, Prisoner of Azkaban. Now the more I see this film the more I like it. Um, I remember going to see it in the cinema, I was really excited about going to watch it when it was first released um, a, lot, a lot of years ago now. but. Um, I went to see it about three or four times I think when it was in the cinema and um, I liked it, then I didn't like it for a while, I thought they changed loads of things from the book, but actually, um, actually it's quite a solid film I think, and it's the best of the ones so far because they dare to do things a bit different. You've got really good characters as well, you've got Sirius Black, uh, brilliant Gary Oldman, uh, David Thewlis as Lupin who I think is perfect. I think when I when I um, was reading the books, I imagined Lupin to look exactly like that. So I was really pleased when um, when the film came out and Lupin looked like the Lupin in my head. Um, yeah, it's the shortest one so far as well, um, which is interesting because the third book's slightly longer than the first two. So obviously they've taken a few liberties in places. Um, the director Alfonso was um, Mexican as well, so he's kind of added some different things in like the shrunken heads that weren't in the book as well he's kind of he added more comedy into the film as well i think and um yeah it just seems a bit more original this one i think it kind of stands by itself as a film sort of outside of the series you can watch it without knowing a lot about the harry potter series to get um and and understand it which is good um so yeah i like this one um prisoner of azkaban I don't know, I think probably 8 out of 10, what do you think? 8. 8 as well, okay. Right, so the next one that we're going to watch, we're almost halfway, it's um, almost half two, so we've been going for about just over 7 hours now. Um, we're going to watch The Goblet of Fire next, which is the one I was so excited about going to see this when it came out, even more so than The Prisoner of Azkaban. I remember going to watch it with my brother uh, when I went off to uni, and... Um, you know, I was so excited to see how they do it because it's my favourite of the books, I think. Uh, it's a really exciting book and um, the film is really exciting as well. There's lots of things that happen in it, but um, 
we'll see, we'll share our views about the Goblet of Fire once we've finished it. So we'll be back at about five o'clock. Okay, it's um, 10 to five on Saturday and we're just short of 10 hours now, 10 hours straight of Harry Potter, which is, um, which is pretty cool. We're just finishing the fourth film, we've got um, otherwise known as Harry Potter and the insanely long hair because everybody seems to have stupidly long hair in this film. I don't know what, um, why they decided to do that. I think Mike Newell was deciding to do a grungy sort of, grungy Harry Potter where all the kids were sort of like typical teenagers who always grow their hair out long, I remember being exactly the same, having stupidly long hair too. Um, yeah, the film is, there's a lot happens in the Goblet of Fire, much more than most of the other films. Uh, certainly, much more than the next film, anyway. Order of the Phoenix, very little seems to happen, in my opinion. Although these books, Goblet of Fire and Order of the Phoenix, are the longest books in the series. Um, but they had to try and condense a lot into this film, into two and a half hours, which is so they actually did a pretty good job. I remember s seeing it first time and thinking, "Oh, it's amazing! It's the best film ever." Um, and it's not, there are lots of problems with it, but um, there are lots of good things as well. And it is, um, yeah, it's a good film, it's alright, not bad. Um, I say, because they kept a lot out of the book and I would have liked to see a bit more, I think I'm probably going to give it a 7 out of 10. I think I like it a bit less now than, um, than The Prisoner of Azkaban. So um, it's a 7 out of 10 from me, what do you think? 7. 7 as well. Hey! <laughs> We're in the same wavelength, that's good. Okay. Uh, right, so join us again just after seven tonight on the 12 hour mark after we've seen number five, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, where things, where we get angsty Harry Potter sort of throwing things around and stuff. Or he should be, he's a bit more melancholy in this film than he is in the book. So join us again after Order of the Phoenix. Okay, well we're over halfway now and it's literally almost to the minute since we started 12 hours ago and we've done five films. So, five films, just over two hours each. Yeah, so some of them are a bit longer than others. Um, to be honest, I'm glad that that one's over. Um, every time I watch Order of the Phoenix I never find anything new that's exciting in it. Um, is based on probably the weakest book, or one of the weakest books in my opinion. Um, Ivana Lynch, she plays Luna Lovegood, she's a perfect find for the character, and she's perfect for the character, like everybody says, but um, I just find the character so annoying. So I just find a lot of what happens in The Order of the Phoenix really sort of mundane, and you know, Sirius's death is important, but that's probably the only real important thing. Apart from, I guess, Voldemort versus Dumbledore at the end, but it just feels a bit sort of, I don't know, like there's so much in the book. The book is so long; it's the longest of the books, but not really that much happens. Um, so I get bored quite easily with Order of the Phoenix. I think it's the weakest one for me actually, because I quite enjoyed watching Chamber of Secrets again. Um, so I was expected to be really bored by that, but that one was okay. I think that one's the that one's the weakest one for me. Order of the Phoenix. Um, but luckily, we are moving on to my favourite one next. We've got the Half Blood Prince, and um, lots more stuff happens in this. It's more laid back. It's not all political. It's not all oh no, it's, everything's all doom and gloom. We get to see much more of Ron in this one, more of Ron and Hermione, and what will eventually happen with those two. Harry starts to like Ginny. Yeah, so you get all of those kind of random romance subplots and things, but also you've got Dumbledore, the best that he's been as well in this one, because in the last couple of films they just haven't got him right at all, but in this one, spoiler in case you don't know about Harry Potter, but obviously Dumbledore dies in this next one, so um, it's a shame that they I had to wait until this sixth film to actually get Dumbledore properly right and uh, Michael Gammon does really well in this one so we are about to start Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince film six and we've got three films left to go 
Okay, it's um, nearly 20 to 10 on Saturday night and we started just after 7 o'clock this morning so we've been going for about 14 and a half hours now and um, we've still got the last two parts of Deathly Hallows to go which um, I think it ends the series really well but um, even though they do cut bits out of the Half-Blood Prince I think it's the best looking film out of all of them and I think they managed to get almost everything right with it. They get a good balance of sort of light and dark. Uh, Jim Broadbent's really good as Slughorn. Um, it's quite an emotional story as well this one. There's, um, there's sort of lots of humour but then it's um, also quite sad towards the end as well and um, it's very sad actually um, Dumbledore's death. They, do, they handle that very well I think. and. Um, yeah, and it's lovely how the film ends as well. The look of the film's really good. The music of the film is um, is some of the best as well from the series. So, yeah, generally it's generally it's really good. It's um, it's my favourite, I think. So, um, I don't know, probably a nine or a ten from me, I think, for the Half Blood Prince. Uh, so we've got about for well two more films left. So it's about four and a half hours left of our um, big. Harry Potter Wizard Marathon and we've got The Deathly Hallows part one and part two to come so we'll have another little update at the end of Deathly Hallows part one. See you then. Okay so we just finished the seventh of the eight films in the Harry Potter series uh, Deathly Hallows part one and we finished with um, Harry just burying Dobby. I remember reading that in the book and that was one of the saddest parts, I think. And um, they do that really well in the film, I think. Problem when you've got like this sort of thing, it's like with Lord of the Rings, the same thing when you've got a story that, well, you don't have like a neat conclusion at the end. It doesn't end, this film doesn't end with a conclusion because it's the first part of a of a two-parter but they do end it well with Voldemort sort of taking the wand from Dumbledore's tomb you know that something you know that it's going to get worse before it gets better at the end so it's um it's very exciting this this film's darker it's very different to part two because this is more like a road movie nothing at Hogwarts whereas in the last film everything is at Hogwarts basically and it speeds through really quickly so we only got about two hours left two hours for um, the Deathly Hallows it's the shortest actually of um, all of the Harry Potter films and um, we'll leave the shortest one for last so part one I don't know probably about I don't know seven or an eight I think from me and I can't decide what do you think Lulu? Eight Eight, and what did you say for Half-Blood Prince, because I forgot uh, to ask. Eight, okay. Eight for Half-Blood Prince as well. No, nine. Okay, nine for Half-Blood Prince. So yeah, I'd say probably nine for Half-Blood Prince as well, and this one, probably an eight, I think. So it is literally, it's midnight now, so at two o'clock, that's it, we'll be finished. So um, we'll have a quick update right at the end of Deathly Hallows Part 2, and we'll say goodbye. So... Part two of Deathly Hallows coming up. Okay, we started at just after seven o'clock on Saturday morning, and we have been with Harry Potter. I feel like I've sort of feel like I've been Harry Potter. I've sort of lived all of his experiences. That's what it feels like anyway. Over nineteen hours, and have a look. It's three minutes past two in the morning on Sunday. So. Yeah, 19 hours exactly that we've been with Harry Potter um, and that's a nice little image to end as well, the grown up Harry, Ron, Hermione and Ginny there as well with um, with a couple of their kids, they've just sent their kids off to Hogwarts 19 years later so all is well in the end which is nice, nice and cuddly. Um, yeah, it's a nice, it's a good, um, it's a good ending for uh, the series and um, it's a really good last film I think. It's the only film though actually out of all of them that I've been struggling to stay awake through um, I think it, because it's so late now and we've been doing it for 19 hours it's um, <laughs> yeah it's 
Yeah, but it's been good though. I've, I've enjoyed it. I'd probably give part two. I don't know. Probably a no, probably a nine or a ten out of ten. What do you think? Nine. Uh, nine out of ten as well. Okay. Um, right. So this is us saying goodbye and bye, Harry Potter, and um, join me again for another marathon at some point. Or join us again if. Lou decides to do another one with me. She's probably not going to, but Lord we'll see. Rings. We'll see what else we can do. Yeah, maybe Lord of the Rings next time. Okay, so um, until next time, see ya. And um, yeah, if you're interested in any of these marathon things or any reviews and things, then I'm going to put this on my um, on my blog as well. So um, you can see some of my other reviews and things on there as well if you're interested. So um, that's it from the Harry Potter Marathon. See ya.